All right, let's talk about this brand new feature that is now available in Blender 4.0. So the last time we talked about Blender 4.0, we did mention that you can create tools with Blender. And for those who missed that, there's a video about that. But just to recap, if you go over to the geometry node and you create a geometry node, for example, and let's say for this example, you choose to switch over from the modifier section to the tool section. And let's just click on new and call this extrude. So we did say that once you create an extrude and possibly you connect this automatically, what you'll be getting is a tool that actually extrudes stuff. So if we just call this EXTRUDE -E, and we'll save that and we come here, right click and mark this as an asset that automatically once we have our object selected and we press the tab key, we can access that right here. So with this tool selected, if we click, you now see what we get. And something else that we mentioned is because we have this tool available, we can save it. We did say that if you want to save this for sure, you need to go over to your asset browser and within your asset browser, you go over to the unassigned section, click on the drop down, go to where you have current files and you can create a drop down catalog, which you can name. So for this example, we're just going to name that 01, click on the button and we can call these tools. And this is basically what we did the last time. And because we have that there, we can now right click and mark this as an asset, which has been done before. And we can drop that under tools. And once you do that and you press your tab key, if you go back and press the tab key one more time, you would notice zero one gets here and you can see the tools down here. So we can go there, go to tools and click on extrude and extrude this one more time. Now, because this tool exists, you can use this for every other object that you have. So in this case, if you go over to your cone, for example, and you go over to the edit mode, you can go over to that menu you just created and create more extrusion. Now, this was what we mentioned that you can create tools, but something that we missed to talk about. And again, a huge shout out to Jackie Luke for demoing this and making us know about it. So what we didn't mention then is despite the fact that you can create tools, you can actually create your very own modifiers. Look at that. So with a brand new scene open, what we need to do is go over to the geometry node. And for example, let's say we would like to create a voxel tool. So I'm just going to go in and create a point to curve. All right. A point to volume, actually. So we can get a point to volume. And from the volume, we can do a volume to mesh. And in this case, we have just created a voxel tool. So what this means is you can now plug in anything. So if I go in and get an object info and say, you know, we'll like to plug in whatever. Let's just go in and get Suzanne and drop Suzanne right there. And with Suzanne the monkey there, if we go over to the cube section, if we select from the section where we need to add an object and select Suzanne automatically, you can see that. So the question is, how do you convert these to become a modifier that you can use, reuse all the time? And how you can do that is simple. Go over to the group input and then you can plug in this particular object info and for example we would like to get some density in there the voxel amount we might want to get the radius you know whatever value you want to have access to you can just go ahead and plug it now with this here i'm just going to call this voxel okay so let's call that voxel put an underscore and say tool all right so we have a voxel tool now if we right click and click on mark as asset automatically we have just created a modifier now, how do you confirm that? How you can confirm that is simple. That if you go over to your modifier section and go to the word unassigned, you notice we have that. So if we proceed to just go ahead and get rid of a cube or, you know, the cube which we created earlier, and let's say we go ahead and get rid of Suzanne, just to be clear, if we tap shift and A on the keyboard and go over to our torus, and with this torus, let's just go ahead and make a duplicate copy. So hitting shift and D on the keyboard, moving this to one section, and we'll like one of these tools to drive the voxel tool while we'll feed that voxel into the other one. So in this case, you can now see that automatically we have that voxel tool working for us. So it doesn't matter if you're creating multiple tools. What you can now do with this is instead of setting up your geometry nodes all the time, you can now save them as modifiers inside of Blender. Now let's go ahead and take a look at something else. So in this case, we're also going to go ahead and get rid of these two. I'm just going to go through and get a simple plane. What we want to do with this plane is absolutely simple. Maybe we'll like to create a scattering modifier. So with this, what we need to do is click on 
new just to create a new modifier within the geometry nodes and we can plug in some stuff so first off we might say we would like some mesh to point okay so that is like the very first thing and we might want to also instance this ones okay so we instance on the point and we're just going to go ahead and plug this right in so now that we have this going you would notice that if we plug in any of the geometries that we want so if we actually just go in here go over to where we have mesh go over to primitives and we would like to throw in a simple cube these cubes can now be instanced on the points that exist with this mesh so we can have that done but if we want this to be a tool that we can use and reuse over and over or should i say we want this to be a modifier that we can use over and over what we're going to do is just to create an object info that will be plugged into the mesh and another object info that will be plugged into the geometry all of the necessary parameters we would like to manipulate we're going to plug all that into the group output and once we are done plugging all of this in there we can now manipulate this however we want now that we have this setup what we're going to do is just call this scatter so it's just more like a, a basic scatter okay so it's called scatter basic and that is what we have we can now right click here and mark this as an asset what i would suggest you do is go over to a panel and switch it to your asset browser and just like we did with the tools you can go over to where you have your current files and you can create a new catalog i'm just going to call these my mods okay so that's just going to be a name that i kind of like and we can also call these tools you know whatever you want you can name it and you can go over to where you have your unassigned grab these plug them into your tool section and there you go so in this case you can switch over to your layout and at any point in time you have multiple tools you like to drive certain things you can do that if we hold down shift and tap on the keyboard and we go over say for example the icosphere so we can have that and we can also bring out something so let's say we would like this to drive the modifier which is a simple plane so what we can do here is to go over to the modifier section and now you can see my mods now under my mods you notice we have the tools and we can play with any of the tools we want we did the basic scatter so we can throw that in and we would like that basic scatter to be driven by the sphere now at this point we might also be needing another mesh so in this case i'm just going to get the cube in let's just scale that down select the plane and this is the object we would like to scatter across the sphere. So we go down, select the cube, and that way you would notice that we have this scattered all around. So we can have everything selected, tap 0.2, and that way you can start seeing that. Actually, let's reduce this even more, 0.05, and you can see it. So in this case, you now have all of the abilities to start reusing your modifiers over and over. Now, is this something that you would like to play with? That is totally up to you. Depending on how much you want your geometry nodes to be used as modifiers or how much you would like to reuse setting geometry nodes, you can actually sort these things out, save them up as your modifiers and start using them. More so, if they are basic geometry setups that you really want to use, you can also save these things as modifiers and use them as much as you want. The idea that you can create modifiers now and you can create tools that you can use without writing a single line of code by just simply using geometry node is amazing. These functions and features used to exist only for Houdini and it's pretty interesting to see that it is now here. And speaking of which, there is a Google form in the description. So just in case you're into geometry nodes or probably you want to create some interesting stuff, you might want to go through the link in the description and check out that Google form. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Amazing stuff right here and you should definitely try them out. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.